Welcome to AP Chemistry and General Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug. In this lesson, we're learning about galvanic cells and thermodynamic favorability. My channel has the entire AP Chemistry course, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss a thing. Now, when we talk about thermodynamic favorability and galvanic cells, there's a very important equation that we're going to be making use of, and that's this equation right here. Delta G equals negative N Fe. You need to be able to use that equation. Now let's take a look at what every part of that equation actually means. The delta G, as we've already learned in this course, refers to the change in Gibbs free energy of a reaction. And we've already said in this lesson, in our last two videos, that all galvanic cells are thermodynamically favored. That means that the delta G for any galvanic cell should be negative. It should be less than zero, as you see here. Our job is going to be to calculate the actual delta G of this. Now, there's a negative sign, and that N, the N refers to the number of electrons that are transferred through the course of a reaction. And that means whenever you write the balanced equation, you know how you cancel out the electrons on both sides, that's the number that's going to be in there for n. So usually it's going to be maybe a 2 or a 3 or a 6 or maybe a 1, something like that. Those are your most common values. Now f, f is a constant. That's the Faraday constant, or Faraday's constant as it's sometimes called. It's about 96, excuse me, 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. That's just a constant that helps us make this calculation. Now the E, as we've learned in the previous video, the E is just the E cell. That's the voltage, the potential difference, and the units on that are joules. I'm sorry, are volts. <laughs> Excuse me, that's volts. Uh, however, just to make our math work out, it might be helpful to re remember that a volt is equal to a joule per coulomb. So that sometimes helps us to do the math here. So you'll see me use sometimes joules per coulomb interchangeably with volts. It's not really that important to, to know, but it, it is helpful sometimes. Well, let's do an example. Let's try this example. We have a galvanic cell that's connected using nickel and aluminum metals at standard conditions. Calculate E cell and delta G for this galvanic cell. So we have the two reduction half reactions written along with their uh, corresponding uh, potentials. Our job is first of all to find E cell. So remember, like we said in the last video, we're going to have to use this equation right here where it's uh, E cell equals whoops, E of the cathode minus E of the anode. So it's cathode minus anode. So I'm going to write it both ways. And I always choose the one that gives me a positive E cell, because E cell's got to be positive. So I can write it like this. We have negative 1.66 volts minus negative 0.25 volts. Or I could flip it and have it where it's negative 0.25 volts minus negative 1.66 volts. So which one gives me the positive number? Well, just looking at these casually, it looks like it's the one on the right that gives me the positive number. Uh, this on the left would give me a, a very negative voltage, and we can't have that. So that means that this is the overall uh, equation here. And to find the E cell, we just do the arithmetic here, and that's going to be a positive 1.41 volts. Now, the problem did not ask us to identify the cathode and the anode, but if it had asked us to do that, we know that it's always cathode minus anode. So that means that the 0.25 or the nickel would have to be the cathode where reduction is taking place and the negative 1.66 would have to be the anode. That's the aluminum where oxidation is taking place. And we could do all the other exercises that we learned in the last videos. But for now, let's just keep it simple here. And we have the E cell. Let's calculate delta G. So delta G is negative NFE. So once again, we're trying to solve for delta G. So that's our unknown. Now we have a negative sign, but then we have N. How many electrons are going to be transferred? 
If we were to write the overall balanced equation for this, how many electrons would we have to cancel out on both sides? Hopefully, at this point, after writing redox reactions for who knows how many weeks and doing this, this electrochemistry lesson, I hope that you can see that the answer is 6. Do you see how it's going to be 6? If we flip one of these, in fact, it would have to be the aluminum that we flip because that's going to have to be the anode. If we flip it, we'd have to get the electrons equal to make it to make them cancel out, right? And we have to multiply the top one by 3 and the bottom one by 2. Basically, it's just the least common multiple of those two numbers. It's, it's 6. Okay, hopefully you can see that. F is Faraday's constant, which is 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. And then E, the E cell, is 1.41 volts. So I put that in here, 1.41. And once again, I just wrote it as joules per coulomb to show you how the, the units work out here. But if we cancel out electrons, top and bottom, we can cancel out coulombs, top and bottom, and we have the numbers. The delta G gives us negative 816,000, and the units are joules per mole. And so that's our delta G. Now, traditionally, we write delta G in kilojoules per mole, don't we? So I should probably divide this by 1,000 and make it negative 816 kilojoules per mole. Notice it's very negative, isn't it? And we would expect that because all galvanic cells had better be negative delta G. They are very thermodynamically favored. And so that's how we can calculate delta G for pretty much any galvanic cell. If you learned something from this video, if, if you'd be so kind as to hit that like button, smash that like button. Uh, don't smash it too hard. I don't want you to break the internet, but I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. That way YouTube recommends my videos to other chemistry students. I've been teaching chemi uh, AP chemistry for over 20 years, and I want you to get a five on your exam and make an A in your class. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you again where we can learn some more chemistry together.